I would have done it better. Have you ever noticed how someone doing nothing can tell a person doing a lot how to do more and better? Kind of the armchair quarterback thing, right? I wonder if that could be true of us as Christians. So let's look and see just exactly what we find here. We're going to go to James, and um, our key verse in James is, is found in James 1, 22, a verse you're familiar with, but it says, um, be, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That's our key verse, and we're going to look at in context and all that, but I just want to start with that as our, our key verse. And I, and I want to tell you, kind of do a commercial if I can for the book of James. Um, James 1 uh, starts out with a greeting to the 12 tribes, and then it goes into discussion of, of things with regards to trials. Um, so in my Bible, they're subtitled, Profiting from Trials, the perspective of the rich and the poor, loving God under trials, and qualities needed in trials. And the passage that we're covering starts with qualities needed in trials and then goes through doers and not hearers only. And so we're going we're gonna to cover all of that. But <clears throat> I want you to understand that, that James 1 really does talk to us about some things that are important when we're in trying times. And we have been in trying times for some time um, in the last couple of years, I think. So definitely a good passage to look at and kind of pay attention to. So in context, <clears throat> starting at verse 19, it says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So that's the beginning, you know, segment, if you will, coming into this, is that <clears throat> my beloved, let every man, so it's talking about every one of us, be swift to hear. And in, in our discussion of the word or acronym WALK for our Christian WALK, we've talked about waiting and asking, and now we're talking about listening. <clears throat> so it's saying being swift to hear. In other words, be quick to want to want to listen, to be quick to want to learn, be quick to want to um, pay attention to what's going on. It says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. How many times have you wished you could take that back? You say something, you wish, oh, if I could just take that back. And unfortunately, once the words come out of your mouth, they're out of your mouth, and you're now in damage control is the best you can do. You can't take them back. You can't unbreak the glass or whatever. You, you can only try and fix it or whatever. The words are out. So be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That means don't get angry quickly. You're not supposed to be hot-headed and just in a quick hurry to be upset. And boy, <clears throat> there are people who walk around that are in fact uh, seem, seemingly set on being in a hurry to be upset. So slow to wrath. And then it tells you why. It says, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. In other words, my making it right by being angry or whatever does not produce the righteousness of God. Even if it creates a change of, of heart where someone is sorry for what they've done or realizes they've done wrong. It does not produce righteousness of God. It's just a response to the wrath of man. And <clears throat> this is subtitled in my Bible, Qualities Needed in Trials. Swift to hear, slow to speak, um, slow to wrath, because it doesn't produce the righteousness of God. Meaning we, we kind of need the righteousness of God in trials. Um among other things. So that's kind of the setup for this next section of, of verses here. And it says, um, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. What? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. 
it, we were just talking about slow to anger and swift to hear and slow to speak. And then it says, and, and go ahead now, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. This is tied to the righteousness of God. And it's also tied to holding our tongue and all those other things. We're, we're supposed to lay aside all that stuff because it's just filth. All that uh, wrath and quick to be angry and speak and carry on. That's just lay all that stuff aside. And it says, and receive with meekness. And again, meekness, uh, I like to mention this oftentimes, but meekness is defined as power under control. It is not weakness. It is meekness, power under control. So, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. The, that sounds kind of weird if you're not, you know, churchy, right? You haven't been in church a long time. <clears throat> Receive with meekness the implanted word. What is the implanted word? Well, that's Jesus. The implanted word. Now, when I read the word, that can help implant it in my, my mind and in my heart and whatnot. That's true. But when I receive Christ, when I say the sinner's prayer and I say, you know, come into my life, come in, come into my heart, Come in and fill me with your, your presence. Forgive me of my sins and all that stuff. We say, well, God indwells you. That's Jesus. And he is the word. That's what John says, that he is the word. So that implanted word is part of when I let Jesus be inside me, when I accept him as Lord and Savior. So I'm going to lay aside filthiness, the overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness, power under control, the implanted word, in other words, receive Christ, which is able to save your souls. And then it comes to our key verse. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Be a doer, not just a hearer. And it goes on and says, deceiving yourselves. We're going to come back and talk about that. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, <clears throat> but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now, that's the, our key verse in its context of John, excuse me, of James uh, chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. Let's talk about dealing with trials. And that's important because in this series talking about walk, when we're out walking, sometimes we encounter trials. When we're living our daily life, sometimes we have trials that come up. So, dealing with trials. I always laugh because, you know, you, you go uh, get on a roller coaster at an amusement park or you go to Disneyland, even, even a ride like um, It's a Small World. They always tell you to keep your hands and arms inside the, the vehicle or the carriage or whatever it is they're talking about. So I made a note to myself here, remain calm and keep your hands inside the vehicle. So in dealing with trials, remain calm and keep your hands inside the vehicles. Um, that's what it says. Beloved, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the, for, uh, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. That's straight up, remain calm. So in trials, apparently, I'm supposed to remain calm. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and all the other junk that I might bring to the table and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, but be doers of the word. So that's where it leads all up to that. But, but then be doers of the word. So in context of, you know, hey, let's, let's deal with trials and let's do this successfully. 
it basically tells us to put aside, put away, put aside filthiness, put aside anger, put, a, put aside, put away filthiness, put away, you know, and this is early in the year. People are still dealing with, quote unquote, their resolutions, which I read something, 50% uh, of resolutions have to do with, uh, what is it? It has to do with like um, being a better person or something. And 90% and of resolutions uh, are, are, have already been forgotten or moved away from in the first uh, week of the year. So we don't, we don't necessarily do very well with them. But put, away, put aside, put away, turn the page. Right, um, you, you watch people, and and they, you know, for instance, diets. You know, we're gonna diet, and it seems like, you know, okay, I'm I'm gonna cut out sweets, and then you know you get invited to a party. Uh, there's cake and ice cream and cookies and you know all this stuff. And you say, you know, it's so hard to diet during the Christmas season because there's all these parties and all this stuff. You know, people are giving you fudge and divinity and all that. You know, so you just you can't help yourself. And then, of course, you know, January comes around and, you know, it's get that new year started. And, you know, somebody has a birthday or, or you, you know, you've got to celebrate uh, something in January, so that's not a good month. And then February, good grief, that's Valentine's. How could you not, you know, deal with that? And then March, of course, there's all the goings on. You, you know, we have uh, different activities that are happening, and you know, St. Patty's Day, and there's there's always something to, you know. So, well, I'll just hold on. I'll I'll make April, and somewhere in there we deal with Easter, and then well, geez. I, I guess maybe May will be a better, but there's a holiday in May, and so that doesn't work. And June, you know, you're invited to parties. Kids are getting out of school and stuff. That's a bad month. July, you got 4th of July. You can't possibly deal with that. Maybe August would be a good month to try and tackle this. But then September, there's holidays again. And October, you got Halloween and whatnot. And November's Thanksgiving, and you're right back to Christmas again. So I don't know how you could possibly change and diet. I can't seem to turn the page because there's something that stops me. And here's the bottom line. When I reach a point when I say, I'm going to put that aside. I'm not doing that anymore. Or I'm going to put that away. I'm not going to pick that up anymore. Um, when I truly reach a place where I say, you know, I'm going to turn the page. Then that's exactly what I need to do. It, I don't need to do this because uh, I want to do a diet. I need to do it because I have a different desire than what I had before. And when my dad used to talk about uh, the things that Christians can and can't do, he used to say this. He would say, um, uh, you know, people always say, well, Christians can't do this and Christians can't do that and Christians can't do this other thing. And he said, you know, for me, it's very simple. I can do anything I want. But when I became a Christian, my wants changed what I wanted changed. And that's, and that's kind of this put aside, put away, turn the page. The idea of, you know, whether you're going through trials, it's the holiday season and I'm trying to cut out sweets, uh, whatever it is. And we get down to where it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. In other words, it's the idea that we're going to act on something, not just listen about it. Not just sit and say, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have done it this way. And start telling someone who's actually doing something how you would do it differently and better, but you're not doing it at all. The armchair quarterback. You know, the guy that, that's out of shape, that couldn't run to the sofa, let alone 100 yards down the field who's sitting in the chair with his feet up and the remote control in his hand because he doesn't want to get out of his chair and go over and change the channel manually. Um, got the remote for that. And um, besides, it's hard to get out of the chair, you know. Uh, I get a little winded when I do that. And um, he, he's sitting there in the chair and he's watching the football game and you got the guy who's, you know, a, a MVP, um, 
one of the best, you know, quarterbacks in in the land, and he's sitting there in his, uh, as I said earlier, Barca lounger, and um, I, I think I dated myself really bad with that term, but he's sitting in his his recliner chair with the remote, saying, "Oh, I could have made that pass, and you know, you you missed that by by five feet. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it." And the, you know, quarterback just threw the ball on the run, sixty yards in the air, and and just missed his target. Um, I could have done that. I would have done this. I, you should have done that. Well, you know, dude, you wouldn't even have got away from the center after the snap before you got sacked because you couldn't run if your life depended on it. And so there's people that will tell you all about what needs to happen, what should be going on, and what really needs to happen is we need to listen to what God is saying. We need to listen to what God is saying. And then act on what we hear not just talk about it not just uh you know listen and gain all this tremendous wisdom and knowledge but we need to actually act on the words that we're hearing so it says but be doers of the word not hearers only very simple don't just hear do do what you're told to do and that's part of turning the page when you go you know what I have decided to follow Jesus and no turning back. I'm going to I'm going to do this not because I feel guilty if I don't, not because somebody said I had to, but I'm going to do this because my desire and 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 what I know is in my heart is that's what I need to do. That's what the word of God says and I need to respond to that. So I have made a choice I'm going to do that thing. And uh, uh, years ago we talked about changing habits, you know, what it takes to change habits. And, you know, they say if you can do something, um, actually less than this, but if you can do something for two weeks, then you can, you can do it forever. It's actually, if you can do it, I think seven times, but if you, if you can do it for two weeks, you can do it forever. So uh, the classic example of that for me is a seatbelt. If you're going to wear a seatbelt in your car, oh, I never remember to put on the seatbelt. Well, if you do it seven times in a row or if you do it for you know two weeks when you're getting in the car, if you just make yourself, I'm going to put the seatbelt on, guess what? It'll become a habit and you'll just do it. You won't have to think about it anymore. In fact, it'll be weird if you don't do it. And so when we talk about things that we need to do in God's word, when we make that decision, I have decided I'm following him. There's no turning back on this. And we, we I'm going to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. I get up out of the Barca lounger and maybe I hit the treadmill a little bit. Maybe I could actually get in better shape where I could actually do something. Probably not going to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. But if I could get to the point where I could do something, um, then then that's actually the kind of change that we're talking about. We're talking about not just sitting and listening to God's word and doing nothing, but listening to God's word and doing something. Well, I don't know what that would mean. I don't have a ministry. I don't want to. Okay. What if you trust God instead of being fearful? That would be being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Because we all know it says God hasn't given a, a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Um, so if I'm going to be a doer of that word, I got to I gotta not be in fear, right? Um, and how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to have to trust God. So I, I, I'm not just going to hear the word. I'm actually going to, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you in this. And maybe I have to even say it out loud. God, I'm going to trust you in this. But I'm going to start doing what the Word says and not just hearing what the Word says. And then there's a comma, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, comma, deceiving yourselves. In other words, if I'm sitting there just listening to the concept and, and figuring out in my head how smart I am, about things and well but that's a good word that that word god uh, has there in his his in the bible that's a good word but i'm not doing it i'm not living it i'm not acting on it then i'm deceiving myself right i'm not deceiving god he's not confused i'm deceiving myself because i think 
I'm capable of running down the field on the run, throwing the ball 60 yards through the air and hitting the quarterback and winning the game, or corner, excuse me, hitting the receiver and uh, winning the game when in fact I get out of breath just getting out of the Barca lounger. I need to be doing what the word says, not just deceiving myself by listening only. And it goes on and says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, so that's what we're talking about, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. And there's, there's no makeup or you know pretense. It's just your natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself. So he looks and goes, oh, yeah, I got some stuff. I, I got a little schmutz there and I need to shave. And so he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. In other words, he, he goes, oh, yeah, I got some schmutz and I need to shave. And, you know... Uh, and he walks away from the mirror. He, he didn't do anything. And he, and he goes out and he, he forgets he forgets he's got the schmutz and needs to sh- He forget all that. Doesn't remember what he looked like when he looked in the mirror. He's, he's completely oblivious to his own condition. Why? Because he didn't act on the information. He didn't act on what he saw. We didn't act on the word of God that was given to us. And um, it says, uh, immediately goes and forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. In other words, if we, if we take what God has given us, if we look at the word that he's, he's given us, and I, I may realize that I come up short, but if I act on what I do understand, if I act on what I do see in the Word, if I act on what God does quicken within my spirit, and I don't get forgetful and, and forget to, to do anything about it, but I act on what's, what's being given to me, right? Then I can be blessed in what I do. And I, I always think when we talk about being blessed in what we do, We are blessed, and I am a huge believer in the blessings of God. And it is a great incentive to say, you know, if you do this, you'll be blessed. And I suppose the number one place where that gets laid out is with with the idea of giving to God or tithing. If you give, he'll bless you abundantly and you'll, you'll have, you know, and so your motivation is supposed to be, I'm doing this so I can get a whole bunch of stuff. And I've heard messages preached on that, and there's nothing wrong with them. You know, give to get. But I'm going to tell you that our heart motivation needs to be like the man who looks at himself in the mirror, but instead of walking away doing nothing, we need to look at that so we can go, oh, I need to get this off my face here, and I I probably should shave, and it probably wouldn't hurt if I combed my hair a little bit. Um, the, The idea is that we need to work and allow the, the word of God to work in our lives. We need to not be forgetful of what we've learned. And we need to apply it. And that's part of walking with God. We need to apply it and move on. And, and the, the reason we need to do that is because if we don't, it says, deceiving yourselves. So we're, we're in self-deception. We're sitting in, and we talked a couple weeks ago about, about you know, checking your blind spot in the mirror. Well, here we are again. There's a blind spot in the mirror. If, if I don't act on the word of God, I am in self-deception. I'm dealing again with the blind spot in the mirror. I'm not gaining anything. I'm not getting better. I'm not getting closer to God. I'm not walking with God if I'm not doing what the word shows me. God will show you uh, his plan. God will direct you in his word. But if I'm not going to do those things, then I'm just deceiving myself. And so as we're looking at the series and and going through here, wait, ask, listen. Listen, as I said before, is an action word. There's, I listen, I get the word of God, I hear the word of God, or I hear the word of God, you know, so I hear it with my ears, I hear it in my heart, I hear it in my soul, I hear it in my spirit, 
it, I hear the word of God, I need to act on it. And when I act on it, that's when I'll be blessed. That's when I won't be in self-deception, but I'll be in a place where I'll actually be moving forward. I can get up out of my um, barca lounger and actually start to do something. And so um, it, it's, a, it's a question of are we going to sit and be an armchair Christian? Or are we going to get up and start responding to the word of God that we're hearing? Start responding to the word that he's planted. Start responding to the words that we're hearing. You know, we're very blessed. We have so many opportunities to hear God's word. We have so many opportunities for God to speak to us. We can create opportunities to hear from God ourselves by our own devotional time being in the word. And then, you know, you, you hear the word on Sunday, you hear the word, you know, midweek, you hear the word at the end of the week, you have special times when you can hear the word. There's video things that are out there that you can hear the word. There's all kinds of opportunity. But if you're just going to listen to the word with your ears and it's not going to affect your heart, mind, and soul, then you're just an armchair Christian. You're just sitting in your armchair. And I, I would encourage you to get up out of that chair and begin to let God lead you and direct you and not be a doer of the word only, but uh, uh, excuse me, not be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. And, uh, you know, I seem to fall on movie references oftentimes in various ways. And um, I probably slept through more of those movies than I've actually watched through those movies. But um, I, I, they tend to bore me, to be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, the little uh, guy in Star Wars, you know, do or do not, there, you know, there is no try. It's, it's do or do not, right? However the phrase goes. But it's something like that. Here's the bottom line. When you hear God's word, you can do or do not. But if you do not, you're only deceiving yourself. So today I would encourage you, when you hear the word of God, when God puts that word out there for you, do. And that's it for this week. Mm -hmm.